So the topic we are going to discuss today is Fuchs uveitis syndrome. Uh, I will be discussing it from the ninth edition of Kansky, chapter number twelve, titled Uveitis. Fuchs uveitis um, syndrome, which is also known as Fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitis or cyclitis, is a chronic non-granulomatous condition diagnosed at an average of 40 years of age. There is no gender or racial predilections. The cause is uncertain, but there is evidence that uh, implicates the rubella virus. Signs in toxoplasmosis can be similar, and toxoplasma gondii has been suspected as a cause. It is possible that most of the anterior chamber activity is due to blood aqueous barrier breakdown rather than inflammation. Uh, so, two uh, factors. Clinical features uh, include detection, uh, which is often incidental. Uh, findings are usually unilateral in 90 to 95% of the cases. Uh, symptoms include gradual blurring due to cataract formation and uh, persistent floaters. Heterochromia uh, may also be noted. Heterochromia iridis is demonstrated most effectively in daylight and in most patients the affected ID is hypochromic. Its quality is determined by the relative degree of atrophy of the stroma and posterior pigment epithelium. It may be absent or subtle, particularly in brown eyes. In blue eyes, stromal atrophy allows the posterior pigmented layer to show through and become the dominant pigmentation so that the eye sometimes becomes hyperchromic. Then posterior synechi, a characteristic of uveitis, are absent here, except occasionally following cataract surgery. Interior chamber shows faint flare and usually only mild cellular activity. Through exacerbation uh, can sometimes be marked, though the eye is virtually always bright, even during the exacerbation period. Uh, now, this picture uh, shows uh, right eye involvement uh, in the first one. Uh, as you can see, it's hypochromic. And uh, there is satellite KPs in the second uh, picture. Uh, but all these things can be seen in the book as well. Now, keratic precipitates are characteristically stellate, star-like, uh, and gray white in color, and are located diffusely over the entire corneal endothelium. Iris nodules, uh, which are 30% or on the pupillary border, KP nodules, tiny crystals, Russell bodies may be seen on the iris surface. Two things on the iris. Then iris atrophy is diffused with loss of crypts. The iris appears smooth with the prominent sphincter pupillae and sometimes blood vessels. Pigment epithelium uh, atrophy can be demonstrated by retroillumination. Iris vessels uh, can be seen, which are fine irregular iris surface vessels. And uh, they can be seen e easily because of iris uh, atrophy. Uh, vitritis uh, opacities in the anterior gel may be dense. Posterior subcapsular cataract is extremely common. Glaucoma is typically a later manifestation but is occasionally present at diagnosis. It develops in up to 60% of involved eyes. Several mechanisms are suspected. Gonioscopy may show fine radial angle vessels or small irregular peripheral anterior synechi. 
The vessels are typically the source of hemorrhage, sometimes seen on incision in the AC, and it's called Amsler sign. Uh, fundus examination may show peripheral. Proditis, foci, or scarring uh, have been reported. There may be an increased incidence of retinal dialysis. Macular edema does not occur uh, except uh, following cataract surgery. Um, all of these uh, signs can be clearly seen in diagrams. Uh, 12.14 uh, page 438 of 9th edition of Kansky. Uh, in picture C, you can see uh, KP nodules with iris atrophy and loss, loss of uh, normal architecture, retroillumination in picture D, and you can see posterior subcapsular cataract in picture next one. Uh, I, I, angular vessels in the last one. Now, oh. topic we are going to discuss. Now, investigation um, diagnosis is clinical, though investigation may be necessary to exclude alternative conditions. Uh, treatment includes number one, long term monitoring is indicated to detect glaucoma and other complications. Topical steroids may be used short term for moderate to severe exacerbations, but are generally not thought to be helpful in the management of chronic low grade inflammation. Cataract surgery here carries an increased risk of complications. Important thing. Poor midriasis and the possibility of post-operative hyphema, increased inflammation, worsening of glaucoma control, and zonular descents should be considered. Post-operative topical or systemic uh, Steroids are used by some practitioners. Now, glaucoma can be difficult to control medically. Surgical options include glaucoma drainage device or trabeculectomy with mitomycin C enhancement. Pass plana vitrectomy may be considered for visually proper problematic patients. Uh, especially in cases of uh, vitreous opacifications. Now, most important differential diagnosis here is that of heterochromia iridis. Uh, hypochromic uh, eye can occur in cases of number one, idiopathic congenital. In cases of uh, number two, Horner syndrome, particularly if congenital. And number three, Wardenberg syndrome. Hyperchromic can occur, uh, unilateral use of topical prostaglandin analog for glaucoma, oculodermal melanoso uh, mel melanocytosis, uh, of course, nevus of ota, that is number two. Uh, ocular sidrosis is number three. Diffuse iris nevus or melanoma is number four. And Sturge Weber syndrome is number five. Hypo or hyperchromic can occur in cases of Fuchs uvi syndrome, as we have already.